Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. This is Clay Ramage. We have another Goodwill Pins haul today. Um, I went um, by myself today. My wife hadn't, didn't go with me today. Usually she goes with me today. She didn't. Um, but we found some great stuff. So um, let's get the housekeeping stuff out of the way. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Um, if you're your first time watching a video, welcome. And to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button if you like the content. And hit the notification, the little bell, um, and that way you'll be notified whenever we put out new videos, which our thrifting videos usually we do on Tuesdays and Saturdays. On Thursdays, we do usually how-to and other type of videos on those days. So that's kind of our schedule. So anyway, but uh, again, thank you for all you new subscribers. Thanks for subscribing and hoping you're enjoying the content. And uh, let's just get right into this. Um, little pressed for time. Things have been really busy lately, so got to keep plugging along because um, there's just a lot going on. Anyway, um, one of the things I found was this gold mirror. There, you can see the artwork on the back of the wall. Um, and this is a plastic frame. It's probably like a Homeco or Burwood, one of those companies, but it's a vintage mirror. Um, it's hard to tell. There is some markings on it but the paper backing covers them up so don't know for sure who made it um but anyway again i lot these up with other gold tone frames and uh, we do well with those things i was excited to find a couple pieces of artwork um in the bin in the bins which i seem to find a lot in our bins um most of it just modern inexpensive stuff but i do find occasionally stuff like this this is an original hand-colored litho, um, and it's actually signed by Professor O.F. somebody. It's hard to read. Um, this is a German scene, I'm pretty sure. Um, looks like Rothenberg. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of these date to the early part of the 19th century. That was one, but then I also found this one which this one is not signed, um, but again, it is a hand-colored litho. I take my little loop and check those. Uh, it's very nicely framed. This is a Fleck Brothers print, and uh, Fleck Brothers used to be very popular and in high demand. I have had their pieces before, and they sell still sell well. Um, so yeah, so that'll be another piece to sell, and I like these smaller sizes because I can list them in eBay and ship them fairly easily. When you get the larger sizes, they're a little harder to ship because it gets more expensive. And then, uh, yeah, so then what do you do? And then I have the dilemma of trying to decide whether I put it down at the Pink Elephant, which is an antique store that I have a booth at, or whether I list it on eBay, try to ship it, do I put it on Facebook Marketplace? And there's all these decisions that go into this reselling life. Um, I never realized there was as many as there are. Uh, so it's a constant thing. Um, one of the things I bought was this tray or stand, multi-level stand, because at the antique store, I do like having these to raise things up, have multiple levels of items. And uh, these kind of things come in very handy down there. So I picked one of those up. Um, and I know Peggy from Crazy for Retro, if you haven't been over to her channel, go ahead her and Norm, Peggy and Norm, go over to their channel. She has a whole collection of Santa mugs. And I found four of them today. Actually, there were more, but I picked out four of the best. They're all the same. These are made in Japan. These are all the same, but the faces, the eyes, are what is different on them. They painted differently. This one looks, I kind of call him the drunk Santa. His eyes are going up in his head. This is the eyes closed Santa. So he's exhausted after Christmas Eve. This is bright eyed Santa, ready to go start his adventures. And this is, I got a black eye Santa. <laughs> he's got the one eye is much heavier painted than the other one. So there you go, we had an adventure. So I liked them just because they're all kind of different even though it's the same mold. Um, all of them in really good shape, no chips or cracks. So somebody just used them for display, which is really cool. Another thing I found was this uh, needlepoint 
someone did. Uh, let's make a nice little pillow. It's a pillow size. And um, I'm just looking here. It looks like put some extra stitches on this side and that corner that aren't on the others. So I don't know if they were going to do more and just stopped working on it, if that's how they finished it. But anyway, these are, you know, it's a nice size for make it a pillow or even doing a small seat. Um, so I picked it up just because I thought somebody put a lot of work in it and, you know, it needs to be enjoyed, not left to sit in the, you know, bins. All right. Then I also got out of my comfort zone and picked up some things I don't normally pick up. Well, this I usually pick up because these are for me. Uh, this is some sheet music. It's a uh, Nat King Cole. Uh, it's called the King Cole Trio um, Novelty Song Parade. So it's a whole book. Somebody donated the collection from this. Um, it says College Library. Um, there's a whole bunch of music books. And I sorted through them. And this was the only one that interest to me that I grabbed because I played the piano so I like playing those kind of songs. The other thing I found was some vintage records. Um, this one I bought for myself, the Baroque Lute. Love Baroque music. This one works by Bach, Buxtehuda, Buxtehuda and Pachelbel. And uh, so that's lute playing. That'll be fun to listen to. Um, and I don't know about anything about these others, but this is River City, uh, Anna Divana, Enterprise Records. These were all, they weren't major label records. They're kind of obscure. Then there was this one, Thoughts in Time. Um, production EFX Library. Stated in 1982, it says a project of Toby's Tunes. Minneapolis, Minnesota. You know what? I need to take this to my friend Dale because she knows all of the local Minnesota people. So she probably even is familiar with that. I'll have to ask her about that one. And then there's also this one. Oh, what's that floating around? Hmm. Anyway, this record, it's kind of a cool case because it's like a slot there. I'm like, is it a bank? It's actually... In a foreign language, I'm not sure. I think it's Spanish. You guys can let me know. But I think originally there were two records. Well, maybe, no, that's not big enough. I guess there's just one. But it's still wrapped in the plastic, so it was well taken care of. There were some other records that I rejected. And it actually looks in perfect condition, no scratches or anything. Um, but I did a quick look up just because I wasn't sure. And this, there was one that of this exact record that sold for $63 on eBay. There you go. I only spent $22 for everything today. So this record alone, even though the, the bottom of it is a little bent, you can see, um, I think we should do pretty well with that. And if I just sell it, sell it for $22 and get my money back. Sweet. All right. The other area I ventured into, comic books. And, you know, I picked up some older comic books before, but I've never picked up the newer comic books. I found this one, Rogue One Star Wars. This says 001 Variant Edition. I have no idea what that means. Um, so I picked that up. It's in good shape. Just a few little crinkles and bends. Uh, DC Comics Batman The Dark Knight Returns. Um, this one's quite a thick book. Again, I don't know anything about these. True Believers, this one's a Wolverine X-23. No idea. Um, but I know who I can talk to. Chris at North Garden Comics. So, um, this is The Unstoppable Wasp. Number one, now, Marble. And then there was this one, Showcase Magazine. This is the one that's a little more bendy to it. But, um, oh, it's a $10 book when you bought it new. Showcase Magazine. So I don't know. Again, 128 pages of your favorite DC heroes and villains. 
No idea. So, while I don't know anything about them, I know people that do. So that's what's fun, is then you can fairly, get the information fairly easily without um, struggling to try to find someone to, to get the information. That's always my dilemma. I found this refrigerator disc dish, you know, for putting bottles in. Because we can have a problem in our um, refrigerator because it's fairly small. That tall bottles don't always stand up between the shelves. But I thought we could use this to set them in. But got an empty box. This is a nice size box for shipping mugs in. And so I like picking up those kind of boxes. Found some fencing for like Christmas Village. Toothbrush for the backpacks. Um, uh, the Christmas tree. This Christmas tree, vintage Christmas tree on a wooden stand. No label. Somebody had tape on the bottom at some point. It's like masking tape or something. But it has all these little fruits glued onto it. And little tiny pine cones. It's really a cool tree. I really like it. So... Even though it's after Christmas, this is actually a great time to pick up Christmas stuff because people are donating the Christmas items they didn't want. So that's the Santa mugs and a beautiful bottle brush tree with all these other items on it. Oh, and I picked up stuff I didn't, I forgot to sort through. Anyway, one of the things um, we use a lot of are Yahtzee pads because um, my mother-in-law is living in assisted living, so we... My wife particularly will Zoom her, and then they play Yahtzee together um, over Zoom, and that works out really well. So we, anytime I find Yahtzee pads in the bins, we pick them up, because we go through them pretty quickly. Found another little fence for Christmas villages or decorating. Um, found this Noritake three-footed bowl. It's a beautiful little scene inside. Oops, I'm losing it. Don't want to break it. So that's very nice. I picked up this mug and I forgot to have them charge me only 49 cents for it. But I think I probably only paid 50 cents for it because it's not that heavy. It's made in Japan. It's got the little um, woven pattern on it, like a wicker chair. So that's kind of cool. I picked this up just because it was weird. I like finding weird stuff. It's a wooden sculpture of a bird. Some sort of bird with a large crest. And that's the back of it, kind of like the tail. But you can tell it's one piece of wood that they carved the body out of. And then they glued the legs on on the stand. But I just thought that was really cool. And I'm really kind of sad... I think it may have originally been mounted on something. You can see the glue marks. And then it got broken off the original base, which may have had the artist or whatever. But, you know, they did a great job. I think it, they should have signed the signed the bird, so we know. But yeah, very creative thing. These are the kind of things I like down at the Pink Elephant. Odd, unusual, different. I found a box of Great Western... Vector pencils. It says fine Indian craftsmanship. A Blackfeet Indian enterprise. So these are uh, um, made by the Blackfeet Indians. Interesting. In Browning, Montana. So that's kind of cool. So we will. Yeah. So we will take those uh, and look those up. Because I don't know anything about those. So I found some knobs. Can I do well with vintage furniture hardware? Um, so there were four of those that I picked up. Also picked up this caribou. <laughs> He's a flocked caribou. All dressed up in his winter garb. Could have been used for Santa and the reindeer, but he was the only one there, so not exactly sure. But I thought he's make a nice little Christmas item for sale. Then I also found this Christmas ornament, tennis player. 
thought I'd give it to my daughter. Made in Taiwan. So, those are fun little ornaments. And, yes, it was jewelry time at the bins again. I did find a mood ring. Fun. And it says I'm in... Looks like a green mood. I think that's good, right? Green means you're calm. Hopefully. <laughs> um, I haven't even looked at this jewelry, so... We'll look at it briefly together. This little hair clip. With the rhinestones. Oh, It's unusual. It's a clip-on earring. It's very different. A screw-on earring, gold tone, it's a little bent, no markings, um, oh, this is kind of, kind of pretty, it's, it's marked on the thing, J. Crew. so it's a bracelet, gray stones and some rhinestones, oh, let's see, Oh, here's a necklace, a heart necklace. Some rhinestones on it. And no mark. Another. This appears to be a vintage clip-on earring. It almost looks... Camera isn't focusing very well. It almost looks handmade. But I'm pretty sure it is. Hmm. It's got some verdigree on it, though. Oh, let's see. I got a tangled up mess here. Uh, with a heart. Oh, more tangled up mess. Again, I just grabbed all this stuff, threw it in the bin. This cute little star emblem. And there's, there's a bit pendant with some other things on it. Oh, some glass and some stone necklaces. Very colorful. Yep, they're all cold to the touch. So, and then, Oh, I found these lovely beaded earrings. And these are actually, there's the other one was still on the card. Yeah, these are Charming Charlie. There's the at least they're hanging from a Charming Charlie um, card. And again, that's not to say they are, because this does not make me think of Charming Charlie. These. Um, then there was another guy in the bin ahead of me pulled these out and then um, said if they turn out to be really valuable that uh, I need to buy him a soda. <laughs> he handed them to me and I was like, okay, but I don't think they're very valuable. They're just... There were two of them. There's that one and then and this one. So so we had a little deal going. Um, then I found a Claire's thing of little girl jewelry. So just a conglomerate of different items. Another clip on. A lot of singles. But the other thing I found that I have done well with, and I grab, and I don't know if I've mentioned it, is I grab finials these for lamps so these two knobs are actually off of some two little lamps um they were actually the lamp shades and i took them off of the harps that were in the bins and i lock these up and i make you know however many 10 15 20 of them in a lot and sell them for you know 20 25 dollars and i do well uh, people like these finials they look for different ones and uh so yeah so that was our haul at the goodwill bins today it was really good i appreciate you guys um watching and uh, enjoying the finds that we get at the goodwill bins in minnesota thank you guys we'll catch you next time bye